Hello and welcome to my podcast. Let's get right to the news today involving Washington Commanders running back Brian Robinson. And let's just start by saying it is positive news and forget the on the field stuff. The fact that he's going to be okay is very good to hear. I can't imagine as a parent getting that phone call or anybody else when it's a loved one. So the fact that he's going to be okay should be celebrated regardless of what happens with him the rest of the way this season from a football standpoint. So, but let's get to what we know as of right now regarding Robinson. So he posted earlier today on his Instagram page that he had surgery and that it went well. We know that there was a chance as of this taping that he was going to be discharged on Monday from the hospital, another good sign. We know that Washington coach Ron Rivera said he was optimistic based on what he heard from Robinson, as well as from the doctors at the hospital that not only would Robinson recover, but that there was still a chance that he could return this season. They certainly aren't ruling it out. They haven't decided yet whether or not to put him on the non-football injury list, which would mean he would miss at least four games. So the fact that they're still waiting for more information on that, it's a good sign, again, not just from a football standpoint, but from a human standpoint, because that means that it wasn't as bad as it could have been. And I think, again, that's the part of the news that need to be celebrated over and over because as this fan base knows, I covered it when Sean Taylor was here. You guys were fans. That was not a good situation. You know, the fact that it's going to end in a positive way for Robinson with the fact that he's not, that something worse didn't happen to him is very, very good news indeed. So I just want to keep the emphasis on that point when I do talk about from a football standpoint, because still the most important thing is for him and his family that he will be okay and that he is optimistic, that he did talk to Rivera, and he was in good spirits when he talked to Rivera, and he wanted him to pass along a message to the fans, to his teammates, and everybody that he's going to be okay, that he's optimistic. So again, celebrate that. All right. Um, What we do know is that he was shot twice in his lower body, according to the police report. He did wrestle away a gun from one of the um, suspects involved in the incident, uh, but uh, the other suspect was the one who then shot him twice in the lower body. He did the gun. The, one of the guns was was apprehended. It was a Glock 43. Um, he was uh, Robinson was treated at the scene by paramedics. You, you saw on TMZ there was a, a video of him. He was sitting up as he was being treated. So that's that was obviously very helpful that they were there fast. Um, if you want to know why Robinson was out there, he was out doing what a lot of people do, going out to get some dinner, and he just happened to have an unfortunate incident. Since Sunday night, according to people I've talked to here, the doctors have been optimistic, and and at least that's what it's been relayed to me. When I talk to people here, that's what they keep relaying to me. So we're going to keep following that, and and nothing so far has changed that belief. The um, players um, have handled it well. Because there is optimism. When you watch practice on Monday, you saw the same things that you normally did. You see the running backs gather in a group after they're done with individual work, kind of get in that circle, do one, two, three RBs, just like they always do. You heard, you saw the energy from running backs coach Randy Jordan. Jordan was with Ron Rivera when he got the phone call about this on Sunday night. In fact, Rivera said they were watching film of Brian Robinson. So Jordan's energy was the same. The other players' energy was the same when they were going through drills. And I think part of that was because they were buoyed by the good news that that surrounds Robinson and that he will recover. So that was a good sign. All right. And here's the other part. Like we today, we talked to Ron Rivera. We talked to three players: Carson Wentz, John Allen, Terry McLaurin. And in their own way, they kind of, you know, they were very thoughtful and John Allen's message, and it's what it kind of always is. There's a, if you know, he referred to it as a distraction, and he says it that way because there is going to be a, there's not a negative outcome here for Robinson. So it's like their job is still to go out and prepare to get ready for the season. And that's why I think, you know, the practice seemed to go pretty well. It was not a somber mood out of practice. Um, and, and I think because they kind of adopt that mindset that Allen said. Then you hear Carson Wentz talking about it and just how it, you know, what it means from, it reminds people that football is a game and that the real life is, is this, and, and they're not immune from situations like this. 
And then you get to Terry McLaurin and you can understand why this guy is so respected when you hear him talk about anything. He, he's going to be one of the most thoughtful players that you will talk to. And it doesn't matter the topic. He's always going to have something positive to say or something uplifting to say or say it in a way where it's like it, it, it gets you more to think, but there's zero controversy behind it. He has an unbelievable knack for doing it that way. And, you know, every answer is thoughtful. He talked about how prayer helps himself get through situations like that. That's what he did. He talked about how um, there's been a lot that's happened here in the last year. You go back, listen, Dwayne Haskins was no longer a part of this organization, but he was a part of these players' lives. So when he was killed this summer, that or in the spring, that was a that was a big deal for them, obviously. And then you go back to last year, you have Montez Sweat's brother being shot and killed. You have DeShazer Everett's tragedy with his girlfriend um, in, the road act, in the road accident last December 23rd. And there's been so many other things. But what, what McLaurin talked about, too, is somebody asked, somebody asked him about how you deal with this. And he said he, did, he goes and talks to a therapist. And the, the commanders have a therapist on site, but this was a different person. because, it's, And so like, I think... Then, you know, then he talked about how you have to have grace and empathy because you never know what somebody else is going through. Just because they're acting a certain way doesn't mean there's not something troubled inside of them. So that's one of the messages that he gave as well. And then he also talked about how he had become kind of a mentor to Robinson, how Robinson would sit next to him in team meetings. And there couldn't be a better pairing for or a better mentor, mentee for um, for for Robinson than getting aligned with McLaurin because they take a similar approach. And that's one thing that struck McLaurin because he said, you know, when he got here, he started making noise in training camp right away. And you could tell that the guy was going to be really good. Well, Robinson's the same way. He took away that. He start, He became the, the number one running back here after that first preseason game, not just because of the fumble, but because of what he showed. And it gave Washington's coaches options, but it was because of what Robinson showed as much as it was because they were tired of Gibson fumbling. And, and so like that was a big thing. But what struck McLaurin is that his mindset was, hey, you know, I know this, but I've, he, like, he said he took the same approach. Like he's got to come in and just maybe he's got to help on special teams. And he's got to help do this. Because even when he was given, when he, even when he took over that running back one job, he still kept the mindset of, I just got to find a way to help this team, whether it's special teams or somewhere else. Same thing with that McLaurin always did as well. So I think that's, you know, that's um, just another thing that McLaurin talked about. He also talked about how, you know, his, first of all, he said he noticed that Robinson wasn't out there today, but he said, you know, he's got an infectious energy and it's not like J.D. McKissick can have a fe- infectious energy, but he's also a very outgoing, louder person. You, you hear him talking a lot. You don't hear Robinson talking a lot, but what you did where you would see the energy is in the preparation in the way he ran and approached, in the way he ran in practice. And as McLaurin said, the thuds, and there's no live tackling, but you would hear the thuds when, of, of the shoulder pads when he ran in practice because of the way he's running. It's that passion that they felt became infectious for them. And it's why this team was excited or is and still is excited about him as a running back because of what that can do for an offense. And he was going to make no mistake. He, when he is out there, he's going to power this offense. And it's what they like about him. He's tough. He's consistent. I think for this offense, that's what they needed. They just need somebody who's very consistent because they're going to be put, they're going to put themselves in situations with this pass game where they'll have a lot of success, but you don't want to be doing second and 12, second and nine all the time. Not that that was always the case with Gibson, but there are times I think with Gibson where he might run the ball, lose a couple yards because he tries to bounce outside rather than attacking his safety in the hole. Robinson attacks that safety in the hole. He may only get three or four yards, but he's going to make that safety pay, and it's going to be second and seven or six, which is much better than second and nine or second and ten. So that's one of the things they were excited about with him. However, they are in a good spot. Just let's go to a football standpoint. Again, I hate to go there because there's more important things, but we are, this is a football team and this is a football season they're getting ready for. So Gibson obviously will be a guy that they can now they'll obviously turn to. They'll also use J.D. McKissick a lot more. And one thing they can do, because of the receiver depth now, what they have the three top three receivers, 
You have Logan Thomas out there who can be a fourth receiving threat. And then you can throw McKissick in the backfield. That can be a primary attack for them because though that's all talent. In the past, you could put four or five guys out there, but it didn't mean they were threats. They just put four or five guys out there. Now you can put three or four or five guys, those kind of guys out there. You can go empty with that group. And it's a pass right. You can motion Samuel to the backfield. You can motion McKissick to the backfield and they can run the ball. But it put, but they have that ability to be very creative with their sets because of the extra help they have at receiver with Dots, Jahan Dotson, and now Curtis Samuel being healthy. So that's one way they can compensate. And then you need Gibson to produce the way they hoped he would coming into camp. I think, like I told you before, they're still excited about what he can do as a running back. So don't lose, don't lose sight of that. But he's got to cure those fumbling problems because if if he doesn't, that's going to put this offense in a bad spot. The other thing is, I'm telling you, you can watch for times where they could go, if they wanted to, they can use two running back sets because you have guys you can mix and match now because they're both run and receiving threats, like Gibson and McKissick, and again, Curtis Samuel. Samuel's help is a big deal. And one last note for the pass game in the offense, a positive sign out of practice today was that Cole Turner and John Bates were going through practice. So was Trey Turner. So they're getting healthy at the right time but they've got to get through the Robinson situation. And again, we'll keep you updated on that when we know more about his status, about him, just his recovery. Again, not just from a football standpoint, but from a stand, the standpoint of just like from him, he's somebody's kid. He's somebody's nephew. He's somebody's friend from that standpoint. So there you go. That's it from me. I'll be back on Tuesday analyzing the roster after the 53-man cutdown. Thank you and have a nice day. Talk to you next time.